overlooking the Cooper's Ferry site, which is located just upstream of the mouth of Rock Creek. And in this area, we can see some pretty dramatic things, geologically speaking, that have happened in the past that are relevant to understanding the site itself and time periods before and after the occupation of Cooper's Ferry. In the 1930s, the WPA had a construction project where they cut away a large section of the terrace that contains the Cooper's Ferry site. So from about 7,000 years up to roughly 2,000 years, that part of the record is gone. So as we see the Cooper's Ferry site today, it's sitting on the 1930s surface that was created during the road construction. The Cooper's Ferry site is contained in a riverine terrace. This terrace began to be constructed by the Salmon River at the end of the last ice age, accumulating loess, riverine floodplain sediments, sand, and eventually slope material from the, the canyon began to be moved down and capping over the top of the site. At 2,000 years ago, the river cut down, achieving its modern position, and as a result, the Cooper's Ferry site was high and dry. So as we can see, there are only certain parts of the canyon that accumulate sediments that might contain archeological sites in what we call a stratified sequence or a layer cake kind of sequence. As a result, it narrows our search for archeological sites in a landscape like this. Also, we find that naturally people spend a lot more of their time in a semi-arid place like this down by the river. The confluence of Rock Creek and the Salmon River presents a major tributary canyon that people could have taken advantage of. It offered unique ecological advantages in terms of resources, plants, animals, and also it offered an easy way to move out of the bottom of the canyon to the uplands. <music>